Hey guys, today I get the unique and special opportunity to show you guys the Delfast Top 3.0 freaking beast of an e-bike. This is the leading e-bike in its class. It's actually the leading e-bike, period. This thing holds Guinness World Records and like titles everywhere. It was e-bike of the year 2019. So it's got a lot of clout behind it. I am here today to test all that clout out and see if it even holds up to real world usage. A few specs on it. It is a 72 volt, 48 amp hour battery. Uh, so that thing's pretty hefty and it is heavy as well. This bike is like 150 pounds or something. Um, so it's definitely, I mean, that's like dirt bike spec right there. So it's pretty hefty. It's got a 3000 watt hub motor in the back. That's continuous. It peaks at about 6,000 watts or so. It's got some unique quirks and features like it has a smart BMS. So you can actually connect to the BMS, the battery management system, and actually control some of the parameters within that. It has that. It is belt driven as well. And it's got pedals. So you don't need registration license or insurance on this thing. And if you get pulled over, the cop will just tell you to move to the bike lane. So I think that's a win-win all the way around. This bike does retail for $6,600. And I know that sounds like a little bit of money, but consider that the electric motorcycles of the same spec category are just a little bit better, obviously. Baseline electric motorcycles that do similar specs start around you know eight to $9,000. So if this thing lives up to the specs and the performance that they claim on their website, I think for $6,600, it will hold its value pretty dang well. And it's got pedals, so again, no registration, no license required, no insurance you need to pay. Now I will say, this thing is pretty hefty. I mean, this thing's 150 pounds and it's a little bit bigger than it might seem. I am six foot three, and I know I say that in every video, I'm not trying to flex on you guys, but I'm six foot three, so you guys can imagine, you know, it's actually pretty dang big. If I was like five one, I'd be like right here. Not everyone can be as good looking as me. But actually I do need to pull the cover off because the start stop button doesn't work. I think they disconnected the battery for shipping. That's pretty standard. So let's pull that off. Let's check what's under the hood and then let's get this thing on its first test. But first, let's take a second to give a word to our video sponsor today, NordVPN. NordVPN encrypts your online data while you're surfing the web, which is actually very important because your data is spread everywhere. Now I get if you're not a celebrity or some high profile person who is worried about getting hacked at all times of the day. But the thing is, is your internet provider actually stores all of your online data on their servers and they like to sell it to people. So your data is floating around who knows where, you know, to a lot of different third parties. Why do you think there's so much identity fraud going on right now? Just saying. NordVPN protects you from all that stuff. And not only does it protect you from all that stuff, it also opens up a lot of different things for you online. Geo-blocked website, shows you couldn't normally watch from Netflix, shows you couldn't watch on Hulu. A lot of that stuff is opened up for you using a VPN like NordVPN. So thank you again, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. There is a link in the description with my promo code. I love when they do this. It's nordvpn.com slash inja. Uh, go check it out. They're giving you some exclusive offers and one month free if you guys are interested. And worst case scenario, you use it for a month for free and you don't like it and you just don't use it. So thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's get this Delfast on its first test ride. So here it is, the Dell Fast e-bike with a motorcycle style seat on it, which makes it look a million times better. So basically we installed that motorcycle seat. I thought initially that the battery had been disconnected for shipping and that's why it wasn't starting. But I found out the uh, start stop button is actually faulty and does not turn off and on the, uh, the bike. You can still start it with the remote. The remote does have obviously the lock, unlock, and then it has the alarm and the start button. Um, so to turn it off, you actually have to hold down the lock button, you know, but it turns off the bike, turns on the bike. It's all you really need. So I may just get a new start stop switch. But yeah, besides that, we installed the seat. Um, I made a little bracket out of aluminum to mount the tail light. 
onto. And in my opinion, this look is just so good. They actually do sell the motorcycle style seats as well. I don't know if in the United States, I don't know how it all works as far as regulations go, but this bike may just need a bicycle seat to be an actual e-bike. So that's maybe why they don't ship it on there, but they do sell them. So you can get a Delfast motorcycle style seat if you'd like. This is just a universal one off of eBay for a hundred bucks, but uh, it bolted on just fine after Lord Kurt drilled some freaking fat holes in it. <laughs> and now it looks great. Lord Kurt's actually over here working on the battery for the Ducati. Um, the Ducati giveaway series, you guys remember that. But anyway, I'm gonna probably take the Delfast out to the street and he'll probably film. We'll probably just ride it around a little bit for a second. So let's get this thing out to the street and see what it's got, dude. I forgot that we need to air up the tires first. You guys saw me use this in the last video I actually did about the Solar FF. This is a portable battery operated uh, tire inflator. I'll check, like, just check this out. It's probably one of my favorite things ever because I just don't like turning on the air compressor just to air up like 10 PSI of pressure, you know? Um, so you turn it on and you can set it to different um, settings. So it goes car and then like moped and then bicycle and like ball, like basketball, soccer ball settings. Or you can just adjust it manually as well. So let's find out what the tire pressure is on this. It says, we did the conversion since there wasn't a PSI on there. It says 36, right? 32. 32.6, 32. but I'll just point, yeah. I'll just put, I'll just do 33, better MPG that way. I love this valve because it actually screws on, but it only connects right at the very end so it's not shooting air out everywhere when you connect and disconnect it. So then, yeah, you just push the um, start button and you can see it's a 12 right now. So it's a really cool, it's a really cool thing. It says it in the owner's manual, but off the top of my head, I think it said four cars, all four wheels you can air up. So 16 tires? 16 car tires. Huh. You can air up with one charge of this thing. That's impressive. Yeah, it is. Super cool unit. And this actually, it actually is a Bluetooth speaker and stuff too. <laughs> so you can legit plug your phone into it and use it for audio calls and like speaker stuff. And just like that, it's at 33 PSI. Now listen to this. I love that it doesn't shoot air everywhere. You can probably hear it. See, just a tiny little puff of air as it disconnects, but that's it. So yeah, anyway, this is the X8 Apex air inflator battery operated from Fantic. I freaking love this thing. Um, I'll drop a link in the description for the Amazon listing for it. It's only like 60 bucks, which blows my mind because it's a Bluetooth speaker, air inflator, and it's portable and it has like crazy specs. I'm just gonna put this on pedal assist all the way up. Pedal assist five. I'm ready to be impressed. Nothing. <laughs> okay. It's not that bad pedaling. No, it really isn't that bad. Oh, you know what? It's this. Okay. It's oh. the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's it. These buttons, that tripped me out real quick. These buttons are actually pedal assist and power settings. Uh, so, I guarantee now if we do this. Yep. Okay. Now I'm ready to be All impressed. All right. All right. Max, pedal assist five. If they ask for it, just tell them it was broken. I don't know what you want to do with it. Look, man. To all right, here we go. Oh, frick, all right. It's got bad. ABS or something. Not bad at all. <laughs> wow. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. It doesn't accelerate ultra fast because it's a heavy bike, but I can feel like it just wants to go top speed kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Cool. You want to give it a shot? Yeah, I'll take a little spin. That sounds fun. <laughs> sure, I'll do a few burnouts and go <laughs> 90 miles an hour. That's yeah. cool. I picked it up and I felt like it should be like an e bike, but uh -huh. it leaned over like a dirt bike. Like yeah, it, had, uh, it more feels to it. more like a more motorcycle than it. a bike for sure. What are your initial thoughts? What do you think? It's pretty sweet. You can feel the RPM not at all near its peak. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. Obviously, it seems like it goes about 70 miles an hour according to this on yeah, its peak. Yeah, exactly. What's it rated for? 50? 
Yeah, they said 50 mph. So, and they said 200 miles of range. So I think it was 213. I think, I think so. It's yeah, I think on the record. website it says 200, but I think on the older posts about it, it says 213. Yeah, it's got the world record according to the Guinness Book of World Records for longest range of an e-bike. Yeah, without so, pedaling. Yeah, so it so, better be dang impressive, dude. I don't think I'm gonna do a it, full range on it today. I think today's <laughs> just the initial thoughts on this thing, I bet it'll getting get it all you set like up. Forty miles based on your track I know. record. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't say that. That's bad karma right there. That's bad voodoo. Juju. We're know if he can't take the Guinness World Record holder and actually get some mileage out, we know he's the problem, not the bike. <laughs> exactly, I'm the problem. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so that's the Delfast. My first thoughts are it's pretty sweet. I mean, I just want to go fast on it. That's the thing is yeah, it's not gonna launch you zero to 60 super fast, but I can feel it wants to go fast. So I say, let's just go fast on Let me get my helmet and we'll go on an actual ride on this thing. All right, riding the Delfast e-bike. okay. All right. This is a Guinness World Record e-bike right here. This is like the top of the top. You can't get better than this. So I'm definitely excited to get this thing out for an actual ride on it it's not at a full charge right now that is one thing i will say right off the bat i did fully charge it but over about two weeks of it just sitting it must have lost a little bit of voltage i will say this thing feels much more like a motorcycle than it does an e-bike it feels like a, a motocross bike it really does It's getting up there, I'm at 43 miles per hour. Brakes bite pretty good. It really does feel like a dirt bike, like a motocross. I feel like I should be on the dirt with this thing, ripping around. All right, let's go full send, full throttle, let's do it. And now I will turn here. I can feel the region bite really hard. I feel like that's what I'm feeling mostly when I uh, hit the brakes. The region kicks on and it's pretty aggressive. So I personally like that a lot. All right, let's top this bad boy out, see what we get. We got about half a mile right here. We're currently at 43 miles per hour Get a little bit of tuck here. I'm, I'm pretty heavy with the big jacket on right now 45 miles per hour Forty-seven miles per hour, so this thing will easily hit 50 I wouldn't say easily hit 50, but it'll hit 50 for sure. That is a true spec That they claim and now I will have to GPS map this as well um, see if we're getting an actual true reading from the odometer, but I feel like that's a pretty good estimate for sure So this thing's pretty quick. I like it There looks like there's quite a, a significant voltage sag. I'm not sure if uh, How accurate that is or not Pro probably pretty accurate But uh, yeah, I'll fully charge it and then I think I might go on a full test ride next time see how much range we get just the overall riding experience after a full charge on this thing yeah that regen bites i love it i really like that so there you have it that is the first ride of the delfast e-bike freaking sweet dude freaking sweet there is a reason why it's expensive it feels expensive when you're on it um but it also doesn't feel overly aggressive. It doesn't feel like you have to be a professional to ride this thing, but it feels like if you are a professional, you would love this thing. So yeah, that's the Delfast e-bike. So far, I'm pretty dang impressed with it. I'm really more concerned about range though, so we will test that next time. This is definitely a bike you want to take on the dirt, and I feel like I would be doing a disservice to you guys if I didn't get this thing out in the dirt at some point, ripping around on the hills, see, see what kind of hills it can climb, that kind of thing. All right.
right, well, this is the Delfast e-bike. This is, again, like $6,600, $6,500. Uh, they say 200 mile range, which I will test next time. I'll give it a full charge. 200 miles, we'll see if we hit that. Um, 50 miles per hour, we already basically hit that just now on a half mile strip, so that is a true spec. So I feel like if the specs are given us that we already tested are true, I feel like we will hit at least near 200 miles on it. But that's gonna be next time. This video was just my initial impressions and so far I'm pretty dang impressed. Um, I'm glad we threw this seat on it because the other bicycle seat that it came with definitely was not nearly as comfortable. But yeah, so far this bike is, is an awesome spec. Tail light works great. Um, headlight is nice and bright. You have high beam, low beam, you have turn signals. Pretty much everything you'd expect on a motorcycle you pretty much have on this thing. Um, it does have adjustable suspension. It feels as it currently sits very much like a, a motocross or some other competition dirt bike kind of thing. Um, I know it's not as fast as a motocross because they actually are tuned differently, but but yeah, you guys can see it bounces really good. So I feel like we need to get this thing on the dirt in the next video as well. Um, just test it out, see, how, see what kind of hills it can climb and whatnot. Um, but today was just my initial impression. I don't have a whole lot of time right now. It is New Year's and we're getting back to work over here. Um, so Lord Kurt's working on a Ducati. If you guys want to see more on this bike, stay tuned and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.